Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for bringing us together again, Lord. A beautiful day it looks like today. Better than some have it in the world. We ask that you forgive us our sins, Lord, and be with all the persecuted ones, certainly. We lift up all the normals, Lord, Brian and Hannah and uh, Jimbo, Lord, Pastor Eric, and uh, our family down in Florida, Alan, Lori, and Thelma, Lord, and all the rest who are doing whatever they're doing. There are true believers that are our brothers and sisters, just like those sitting next to us here. We sometimes don't realize that, but there is a true invisible church, true believers, the true saints, and we can't wait for the rapture to happen soon enough, Lord. So you can deal with this world as you've already written you would deal with it. So we thank you for that, Lord. Forgive us our all sins and be with us. Help us understand your word better and better each day. And to the end, help us obey you. That's the bottom line. We can know it from one end to the next. It's about obedience. Help us do that, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so simplicity is beautiful. That's why I'm a simple guy. <laughs> the beauty of simplicity, my title today. So by definition, simplicity is the exact opposite of that which is complex. And astoundingly, the complex is revered in this world, isn't it? And the simplistic is mocked and berated as near worthless. You ever thought about that? People are berated as being simpletons. Simple-minded, culturally simplistic. That's what the word barbarian means. It means you don't have streets and, and uh, things set up like we do over here because you still live in the woods. So you're a barbarian. You don't have my way of looking at things. You're a barbarian. So Conan the simpleton. That was a joke. I tell you, you guys are slow on the uptake this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a building up of ideas and theories that's what is basically constituting our modern wisdom today it is thought and taught that the more the merrier isn't it that's where we're all that's where it's at if you got more you should be merrier but is that true so and we see in what the world called science we see it all over the place. It's interesting. Well, some of the information that was once considered the latest and greatest uh, data up to date is still valuable for the most part. But anything outdated goes to the heap, doesn't it? And things are going to the heap faster and faster and faster and faster because, I mean, who still has a transistor radio? Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the really old people in here do. <laughs> but these things must needs change continuously because the sheer number of so-called advancements, and we're told by Scripture, God tells us that in the last days knowledge will increase. That's partly and probably mainly what it really means. Knowledge will increase. Whatever was today is no longer tomorrow, and whatever was yesterday is already long gone. We don't care. We think about today and tomorrow, and especially tomorrow. Especially in the last hundred years or so, new discoveries that we've all made in one single day in whatever field of study. It just goes on and on and on and on. And listen, it's only been in 150 years or so, last hundred especially, in the last 75 more so, the last 50 more so, the last 25 more so, the last five years even more so. It's just exponentially really going faster and faster. We're circling the proverbial drain, folks. And you know, you've heard me preach on this truth many times. And uh, in truth, with the Lord, quality is always better and matters most than quantity, no matter what the subject is. It's quality that you want. If you're seeking love, you want quality. If you're seeking riches, you want true quality riches which has nothing to do with an amount of something. And whatever you do have, you and I are called to share it because it was given from God anyway. 
we I know we think that we earn things or you know we make things happen and, and no we don't because we still have to have the opportunity we still have to have the wisdom to say yes and walk through that door or no and not walk through whatever particular door but it's all presented to us and the, all good things come from above don't they mm -hmm. that's where the Lord is hallelujah but in this perverted and godless world, the ways of life promoted by the Antichrist and his system, under which our society is structured, by the way, will not accept anything unless it seems complex. This is why the bankers have their own language. Scientists in different fields have their own language. They make up words just to speak that language. And unless you study it, you don't know that language. <laughs> you got to look up the words. It's amazing, isn't it? Everybody wants to make it complex. Nothing is accepted unless it is complex. So the fact is that all this gathering of information, of course, only proves the immense lack of wisdom and knowledge that exists in actuality. I have to have more than I did yesterday because I don't really know it all. But they don't say that part. They're saying, I'm going to get to know it all the more I gather. But our heads are only so big. We make doors only so wide. <laughs> Some of us won't be able to go through a door because we got so much information. We'll have to deflate, put a pen in our head, let some of it out. See, there's always something unknown, is there not? Therefore, the hunger to know remains unsatisfied. And I get something new, and I'm all excited, and it goes away, just like any other high. Those who get high on substances don't stay that way. It hits a peak, and then they come down, they got to do it again. And over time, all of that is a detriment to the body, to health, to the soul. It's never enough. Also the case with those who love money, it's never enough. So the gathering of more and more knowledge is what is exalted by those in the world who gorge themselves with the forbidden fruit because they covet being gods themselves. That's where it started. If you do this, you will know what God knows. Well, if we understand anything about God, the basics about God, then we need to know that we can never get there <laughs> unless we become gods. And that's where the lie gets perpetuated. All false teachings and religions teach and promote self-godhood in one way or another. Knowledge is power, so the saying goes. The more knowledge, the more power one would think. Is that the case? No, because we have what we call here Big Brother. And, of course, the world government that they're desperately forming faster and faster and faster. It's been existing, by the way, for a long time. Yeah. Every time I hear somebody, oh, we're, we're, if we don't do this, then we're going to be under the power of these people. And we're, gonna, we're not going to be anything. We've been there already. It just hasn't been completed. It's just more and more and more. Talk about qual a quantity, right? So the world has a bunch of knowledge by now, but that doesn't help us get along, does it? Look at Ukraine, look at Syria, look at South America, look at Africa, look at the Middle East in general. Look at the problem in our inner cities and all the rest of it. We just don't get along, but we have so much knowledge, we ought to get along really great. If knowledge is power, and if that helps, if that's good for us, then we ought to get along really great. We ought to truly love one another. But we need to continually augment what is already known. And that, of course, is preferred over just believing him who literally already knows everything. I love it. My father, God, knows everything. Yep. He's the only living God. Amen. His word is true. He said it. I believe it. That simple. See, eternal life is what many seek only without God. So they seek sustainable localities where this might be possible. They talk about the moon. They talk about Mars, some other worldly existence. 
Some have their heads frozen in hopes of future technology being able to unfreeze them to life again once sickness and disease has been eliminated. I have to laugh because these people are stupid, but they do exist. They seek eternal life, and they say so. The very thing promised by the only one who can make it a reality, the Lord. He promises eternal life. They say, yeah, I do want that, but not with you, from you, for you. I want it on my own. That's the problem. Now, how could I possibly get eternal life? My body's falling apart. As good looking as I still am. (laughs) It's falling apart. All of our bodies are. How am I going to, you know, I can freeze my head from here till whenever. And all it'll be is cold. Yeah. I'm not going to get eternal life from that. And at the same time, that one's cold. My soul's burning in hell. That's right. If I go that stupid route. That's not even in my notes. The Lord must have done that. Thank you, Jesus. See, the irony for them who think this way is that they will already have eternal life anyway. Think of the arrogance. They desire to live forever in their sinful state. They don't want forgiveness. They figure it's not needed. And they don't know that Scripture clearly teaches that once created, they won't cease to exist. Nowhere is there a teaching that the ceasing of life is just a ceasing of life well lived, (laughs) of comfortable life, of loving life, of useful life. Unless they're covered by the blood of Christ Jesus, their forever existence is in the lake of fire along with their God, Satan. Hallelujah. I can't wait. And notice, too, that quantity of time, you know, this whole thing is preferred over the simplistic creation week made made up of six literal 24-hour days. You cannot twist that into any gap theory. You cannot twist it into any evolution. And I'm hearing more and more believing scientists, you know, believers, but they get something screwed up because just because they study genetics, for instance, they think that Darwin was onto something. Darwin himself studied theology at first. He said, he freely admitted the eye and the complexity of the human eye, even back in the middle 1800s, middle 1900s, 1859 is when his book came out. He said, I I can't explain it. The little birds on Galapagos doesn't explain that. Was he somewhat right? Yeah, he, was, he, had, he had a track on, on just like there is such a thing as horizontal evolution. It's true. Different kinds, but you don't have vertical evolution where things change from a chicken to a dinosaur or vice versa. Yeah. A monkey doesn't become a kumquat or an orange. You know, it's just ridiculous. It is what it is what it is when God first created it. Hallelujah. But everything has to have time because if I put enough time in it, it's beyond our imagination even. It's beyond our thinking, our comprehension. And so it's easy just to lay it aside. Well, that was millions of years ago. And notice too how everything is geared toward achieving more quantity and speed in calculations and travel and acquiring new data on everything imaginable in production and delivery of the product, in distribution and selling and advertising ad infinitum. It's never enough. I remember when Jill and I were first introduced to the WWW. We had a student at our academy who was working for an outfit <coughs> at, at Purdue, and she offered to help us, so we went to where she worked, and And she had to do her thing and put in her password and all that. And then we had to wait to be allowed online. It was similar to being on a party line with the phones, you know. You pick up the phone and your neighbor is talking to somebody. 
Yeah, it, it was just, it, that wasn't that long ago. That was uh, early 90s, actually. Yeah. And, uh, and then finally we got on, and then we only had so much time because everybody only had so much, because others had to get in. And, da, da, da. and then just a few years later, look at the word now. You can just get on pretty quick, and bada-bing, bada-bang, everybody's on and doing their thing. It's crazy. Communications must have increased speed and content. Why? Nobody really knows. It's just what we want. It's what the world wants. God promises those who believe his report such mind-blowing, awesome things once we reach life eternal that one can only be astounded by it. A chariot of fire with horses of fire picked up Elijah. What are we going to do with that? Elisha's servant, his eyes were open, and there were so many chariots of God around them to protect them. What are we going to do with that? And when you read Ezekiel's description of the uh, seraphim he saw, the burning ones, the word means, in heaven, the throne of God, hallelujah, his train filled the temple. Woo! He used to sing a song that has that scripture. It's awesome. If I could think of it, I'd sing it, but I can't think of it. One day I will. So they're all astounded by this. They all want eternal life, but they don't want it with God because that means they have to say, okay, I'm a sinner, and they don't want to do that. So they dismiss the truth of God and his word and prefer to do that along with a long stream of data with the old sideline or trash and the new is exalted for a time. There's always going to be this new information, new information. And yes, we do find out new things. Yes, there is new information. The new information concept is not bad or wrong. It's why we're going there. Why are we pushing to be so fast that we can't even control it? I just said it. We can't control it. Well, if we can't control it, Somebody has to be in control. And if we don't control it, somebody does control it. And if it isn't godly, there's only one other possibility of the controller. So complicating things is Satan's preferred method to continue fooling the masses. Simplicity is to be shunned. Complicating things is the hallmark of all worldly systems, including governance, finance, education, medical, ecclesiastical, and social. Now, these are all needed to organize society, obviously. However, they've been kidnapped way back in the garden. The simplicity of, almighty, of just believing, that is, Almighty God and His Word was trashed, and the race to get more and more knowledge was on. Take a bite of this fruit! You know, did God really say it? Come on, you surely misheard him or he didn't really mean it. Because if you take a bite of this, you're going to know what he knows. That's why the bite's out of the apple in Apple computers. It's saying, Satan! Just like that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, just put an apple in there. What's with a bite out of it? Yeah. See, it tells the message, the garden, Eve, ba ba. That's what it is. I got it from you. I am an authority now. I can run this show. Hmm. Doesn't matter that God owns the trees and the birds and the bees and the mountains and all that. I run the show because I run the social, I run the financial, I run all the rest. And that's what Christ got back. He got back our freedom at the cross. That's right. All power was given to him, the Bible says, Matthew 28, 18. And the last part of that, as I already mentioned, I think last Sunday or two is going to be after Armageddon when he gets the physical borders back. He gets the physical earth back. He'll divvy out the countries to what they need to be. From God's established 70 countries, we've turned them over, I think, into over about 200 so countries. We didn't have a right to do that. And that's why we have trouble because all the different, you know, I've just preached on that too, all the different factions inside a country they don't want to be part of all this other stuff that man has created. So an accumulation of knowledge is really, in truth, only that. It's a bunch of information. 
However, it takes wisdom to make any knowledge worth having. So now we've entered the post-human age, they say. We're not going to enter it. We have entered it. Transhumanism and the rest of the perversions are taking center stage. They're coming more and more out of secret labs. They're being financed and funded by all kinds of famous um, people who have a bunch of money and their corporations. And they're coming out more and more because they can. Godless humanity is detaching itself from being God imagers and transforming themselves into beings who are quite literally hell-bent on everlasting destruction under the delusion of becoming gods. That has not stopped. Think about this. The quest to become a god, don't stand in my way, they say. It's mine. I want to become a god. So this cycle is repeated endlessly, it would seem. And this only goes along with the Hindu cycle of life, the samsara, into which the lie of reincarnation has been woven. You're not going to come back as a rat because you were a rat in your prior life. You're not going to come back, back as, a, as a, somebody you beat up because you, know, you, you were a wife beater in the past and now you're coming back as a wife to, to, to pay for that. So while they say there's a paying for those kinds of things, they don't recognize sin. David said, against you only have I sinned. Hallelujah. We sin against God. And of course against each other too, but ultimately God. Of course, now the world also is far enough along to add the silicon, cyberspace, IT, AI technology to samsara, this Hinduism, and voila, a new humanity divorced from God has been created. They don't like his harsh commands as they label them. And it's finally achievable, they say, after eons of time. Look where we are. We can become gods. Don't mess with me. And in order to become gods, they have to have laws that support that kind of nonsense. And in order to have that, they have to be soci socialistic, commie, Nazi, Sharia people. And that's what we have. All false teachings have a... Long, elaborate spiritual method that one supposedly must follow in order to find this godhood. The closer they get to what they think they can achieve, they're actually in agreement with believers in Christ Jesus who know what time it is. It's the last days. They also know it's the last days. Only their last days is, yay, we're finally here. We can become gods. Clearly, the universe had a beginning. God already said so. And modern science has confirmed it. The Big Bang. They also know it will end in what's called a heat death, having to do with the ambient temperature spinning out of control. It's partly what's driving this climate change scare. See, there's a scientific fact that things are changing, but it's not because you and I are breathing or the cows and animals, you know, shoot off the gas they shoot off. Anything that begun will of necessity also have an end. Only one power can and does keep things afloat. And that's the power of the word, Hebrews 1.3. He keeps all things going on with the word of his power or his powerful word. Hallelujah. So simplistic living is the smartest method to make it through this world. Simple is always better. I like being a simpleton. My wife likes that too. <laughs> it's more manageable. Think about it. Easier on the brain, much less worrying going on. Better chance to correct wrong or initially uninformed decisions and much, much more. Stay simple. This is why those who desire it simple have been forced into the complex by the evil powers that be. They need everyone to have worry, dissatisfaction, and chaos in life. You can only do that by piling on. See, piling on, piling on, piling on. All of us are squeezed more and more into having to utilize all these aspects of the one gadget, the device still called a phone, 
just to live normal lives and conducting normal activities. It's no longer a phone, never hasn't been for a long time. It's only called that. It's the conduit through which transactions of all kinds pertaining to contemporary life are made. Apps for this, that, or the other are bombarding us at every turn. And all six realms dictate life in 2022 rely heavily on getting everyone to do everything through these devices. I mean, it doesn't matter where you go. Get the app. It's free. Apps that complicate things in reality are sold as if they make life simpler. They don't. Faster and even convenient may be, but not simpler. There's a difference. Just because something is fast and convenient does not make it simple. People are surprised when I tell them I don't do apps or shots or that I don't have a doctor, that I don't have a list of medicines I take. But for most, that's the way it is. And medicines, of course, if you need medicine, take it. No problem. Problem is what we have passes as medicine is man-made synthetic nonsense to drive an industry. But each person has to decide what they're going to do. I like things simple. Life really is simple when you think about it. But to have even limited success in this screwed up, evil, demonically driven world system is getting more complex. You have to be more complex. We have to rely on people who know something about the phone that I don't, which is everything. Everything past a phone call and a text. <laughs> I got to redo the thing on how to take a picture. I don't even send it. I have no clue how to send a picture. But I'm doing some of this on purpose. I'm sure I can learn it. I am fighting it, you see. I'm fighting this. However silly it may be in the end, I'm still fighting this in my own head. And all of that is true because we already don't actually own anything. Only the rich do. Proverbs 22, 7. The rich rule over the poor. Klaus Schwab, founder of the World Economic Forum, a think tank that meets annually in Davos, Switzerland, under super high security, to discuss plans for our future, he said, quote, by 2030, you'll own nothing and be happy. Do you remember the quote I've given many times in many sermons about uh, George Bernard Shaw? He said this back in the 1920s, the Fabian Society. Under socialism, you'd be clothed, fed, housed, employed, and all this. And if you were found not to be worthy of all this, you might kindly be offed, eliminated. Same thing. See, they've been working on it. For as long as all this information has come, all this you know, quadrupling and, and exponential growth of information, they've been right on line. And look where they are today. He also said, the same guy, old Klaus Schwab, said, we're going to infiltrate and we're going to take chairs and seats in Congresses, in important positions. Same thing as the Freemasons do. They all became leaders. They became mayors. They became senators and congressmen and presidents and prime ministers and what have you. Presidents of colleges, they, they decide what is to be taught. That's what we have, folks. They've been working on it nonstop. We're not going to have this. We are having this. You and I were born under this. It was long before any of us were born already. See, we don't want to think that. But look how fast the hippie generation came and went. Look how far, But they left something behind, didn't they? They left the Clintons behind. <laughs> you know, for one, for one and all the other low life. By the way, Schwab says Angela Merkel was one of his young converts. So is Macron of France, currently president. So is Vladimir Putin, also one of his converts. They're all together, guys. We've said it forever. And many more that you'd recognize. That's why these guys are still in power. They're not going to be out of power. 
And even if one particular person is, the next one who was their buddy next door that learned the same thing under the same people will just take over. But the people think that, oh, we voted. Okay, you guys ready to vote? That's what voting is, okay, all over the world. You ready to vote? Yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. All right, between what, one of these guys. Yeah. Which one are you going to pick? None. The one in the middle. <laughs> the one in the middle. See, either one you pick, I win because I put him out there in the first place. You pick this guy, I win. You pick yeah. this guy, I win. doesn't matter. That's what voting is. <coughs> See, this whole own everything and be happy, or own nothing rather, and be happy by 2030. Keep that in mind. What is it now? 2022. You think he's far off? Yeah. This great reset is that. That's what the great reset is. They're resetting humanity to completely get away from biblical, what's called Judeo-Christian thinking, which it already is, but they, they still have some vestiges they need to wipe out like us into this total godless nonsense. And as I already said, Fabian socialism has always predicted this quite accurately. The rich want to own all of us, regular people. They decide who lives and who dies and who gets to buy and who doesn't. The Bible predicts a 6,000-year time span for mankind's rule controlled by the devil to come to an end. The Essenes, I've been talking a lot about them. I'd study them, I mean, really heavy. All kinds of sources. We're going after a lot of that stuff. The Qumran material in Bible study right now, it's very important. God's allowing his, his people to to get, get a clue on what all this is, even more so. Not to bring us to faith, we're already there, but to confirm, that's what this is. And they accurately predicted the end of this time frame to be 2075. The 6,000 years the Bible talks about is over in 2025 or 2075 on our current calendar. So in a short three and a half years, in 2025, the beginning of the last jubilee, which consists of a 50-year period, commences. We need to be very mindful of that, live our lives as right as rain, obey God to the best of our ability. So within this last jubilee, the rapture of the church, the tribulation on earth, and the second coming of Christ to earth with all of us saints in tow will come to pass. There'll be a changeover. There's a changeover period. And it starts in 2025. And because not all of you were Bible study, the changeover period has happened in every single millennium, in every single uh, jubilee. Every time there's a change, it's not like it changes now. The change is like, like a runner running with a staff. And before the other guy gets it, they cover some ground, don't they? That covering ground between when the guy's near enough and the guy actually gets it, that's what this 50 years is all about. This age will end and bleed into the new one, and the new one will bleed into the old one, and then when everything is set, that's it. That's the official, it's over. Another example, officially Judaism was not over in AD 70 when the temple was destroyed in Jerusalem. Three years later, another temple was destroyed, Jewish temple, in Egypt. And two years after that, woo, in 75 AD, oh. the Sanhedrin said, we're done, we don't need a temple nor sacrifices anymore. That became the standard for Judaism, which is totally godless until they come to Christ. If they come to Christ, they're covered. They don't, they got to live under Moses' law, and they can't because they don't have a temple. They can't because they don't do sacrifices. You see, nothing they do is right, and God's calendar is perfect. The math is perfect, the timing is perfect, the holy days are perfect. You can't mess them up. There's so much to this. It's very complicated, actually. Not because there's a lot of information. It's complicated because our heads are so screwed up the way we've been taught by our school system and everything else in our life and watching cartoons and doing that. That's what it is, folks. All, the, all this so-called entertainment has screwed us up to the max. Yeah. The music, all of that stuff. So 
So considering what's going on around us and the timeline Schwab gave the world is right on time. Think about it. If he's right about 2030 to be where they want to be in totality, that's five years into the uh, Jubilee. Jubilee is seven times seven, which is 49 plus one year. You always have 49 years, and then the 50th year is your Jubilee year. The Bible says God gave that to Israel so that all debts would be forgiven and everything. They never saw it because they never lived it. But that's still true, and it's still what God's will is. It's amazing. Ow! That's good stuff! <clears throat> Jesus is coming soon to set up his kingdom. And before that, we have to be out of here. Before the tribulation, the Bible clearly teaches there's a pre-tribulational rapture of the church and snatching away of the true church so that he can then deal with the world and save any of those who still might come, and many will come then. But they won't be coming under what we know as grace. They'll be coming under the kingdom principles. He's going to rule with a rod of iron. Think about it. And the interim period is the tribulation. What a rough time. If you're not coming to God now... Chances are really good you're not coming then. First or Second Thessalonians 2, 9 and 10, I believe, Paul says, if you're not coming, or all those who didn't come before, he's going to give a spirit of stupor that they won't come to him because they didn't want him. They only want to have fire insurance. Not good enough. Love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. That's what it amounts to. And we love him, we show love to him by obeying him. Yeah. And how do we do that? Believe on him whom the Father sent. John chapter 6, I think. What shall we do to have eternal life? The apostles asked Jesus. He said, believe on him whom he sent. And he calls that a work. Yeah. Do the, this is what you do to do the work of God because they asked him about the work of God. And he said, believe on him. To believe is to work. Why? Because we have it takes action to prove our faith. James 2.17, right? Mm -hmm. See how many people have that screwed up? Oh no, it's not, it's not works. It's not your, well, of course it's not works that you do. I'm gonna do that, or I'm gonna, you know, give a million dollars to this outfit, and no, I need to go to heaven. No, it's not that. That's a, you know, the work is of proving our faith. That's the work. Without it, faith is dead. You know, Bruce Lee in studying close quarter combat came to the conclusion that it wasn't the adding of information and the bundling up of so many so-called techniques that mattered, but the simplicity of it all. The simplicity of movement at the right time with the right attitude. He advocated a stripping away of the unessentials. He used to always use a, a sculptor, you know. He basically chips away at the thing until the thing forms that he wants it to be. In Frankfurt, we have ice sculptors every, every winter. They come up there and they make these things. It's pretty amazing what they can do with a chainsaw and a block of ice. You, know, you have to be talented. I couldn't do it. It's, it's amazing. But it's about simplicity. One of his favorite sayings, which I applied and appreciated long ago and have kept as a fact, and it is a fact, he said, true refinement seeks simplicity. Meaning if you really want to get to the heart of something, you don't add a bunch of stuff because that only gets confusing. You take away until you see the thing, until you see the truth of combat, until you see the truth of plumbing, until you see the truth of something, anything. So you chip away at all this nonsense the world bombards us with and go to the Word of God, the Bible. That's what the 66 books are it. Even the stuff from Qumran that is very good that we're studying is not Scripture. We don't believe it. But we know whatever it says in there that uh, confirms the Bible, yeah, 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 <laughs> you see, a lot of it is still perverted. That's why we're careful in the study of it. But the point is, we keep the 66 books. The Bible is the truth. His word is the truth, period. Yeah. So simplicity, we want to seek simplicity. It's about simple, uncomplicated initiation or response to anything that brings the best results. And I can't argue with that because it's true. The ability to keep calm, cool, and collected in the middle of any chaos is gained by an equally simple matter called choice. Look at the problem people have 
and the mental anguish when they just can't make up their mind. Most women in the store. I mean, really. Too many shoes on the rack. <laughs> you know, whatever. Just, are you hungry? Pick that sausage right there. <laughs> Uh, so the ability is hampered by emotionalism, the running amok of feelings of fear in particular. It's why the COVID thing worked so well. Now we're told that Putin is the worst human alive. I could say Schwab is. Mm -hmm. He trained him. All the others are equal. They're all mass murdering, lying, thieving, godless twits. Yeah. Especially... Something else Bruce Lee taught me a long time ago in studying his stuff before I even got saved. He said, what's needed to survive a vicious attack of any kind, physical or otherwise, takes what he termed correct emotional content. He used that a lot. He was a young man, but he, God did bless him with wisdom, and he took him out probably because he was a pagan. Was no, no, he, he wasn't a believer as far as I know, but he understood some things that were true. And he got it out of Buddhism, Taoism. There are a lot of things in there that, yeah, that's true. Word faith that we were caught up in taught a lot of truth. We know because we graduated from their Bible school. Taught a lot of truth. But all it takes is one little lie. Right. A little leaven leavens the whole bunch. You Israelites, remove all leaven on this day. Day of unleavened bread. That's why it's called that. <laughs> Get rid of the sin. Symbolically, clean your house of leaven. Clean that kitchen up. You're not having any in the house. And you're going to bake flat cakes because you're not going to use leaven. And that's symbolic to remind you, you need to, cleanse from your, you need to be cleansed from your sins. You need to be asking for my forgiveness and I'll gladly give it. Hallelujah. So a chaotic emotional action in response to something sold as dangerous Instead of being prudent and considering alternatives that make sense, that's what the demonic politicians are pushing us into. Have you noticed that while most people, you know, things are opening up now. In fact, I think Brian and Mike, <coughs> a student of ours in there, they're going back next year, I mean, next week, back to the office as opposed to working from home. Yet they're still pushing this. There's a big billboard doesn't say COVID, but it says flu shot in Frankfurt. Big, brand new billboard. Cost, you know, two, three thousand dollars a month to have this thing up there. Says, uh, oh, get your shots, be healthy, be responsible. <laughs> Children, six months older and up. <laughs> They're advocating it like there's no, you know, and so all the mothers are supposed to take their little baby. Are you kidding me? Can't even walk yet. Yeah. That's what they're advocating, folks. It's all over the place. Others in history have said the only thing to fear is fear itself. Demons play acting like politicians tell us, yeah, fear, but trust us. We know what you need. We want to own everything, including your soul. Yeah. But God has not given the believer a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound That's mind. Right. And we need to tell them that when push comes to shove. And where was this or is this power in supposed Christians who stood up in lines to get vaxxed and are afraid to get sick and die? They let themselves be led by the nose through emotionalism. In everything pertaining to this life, simplicity is the key. However, just the opposite is espoused by the enemy of our souls. And another saying that's more or less popular in the world and one that is actually true is, keep it simple, stupid. It's true. We use it a lot. We think it. We know it. We know all this stuff should be simple. We know this. But we allow the stuff to be piled on because, well, that's just the way it is. We can't fight City Hall, that kind of mentality. And I get that, that, that there's a lot of truth to that. 
you know, how good, how much, I've used this, this a lot, but, and it's true, what benefit would have done a Jewish person to stand on a street corner in 1930s Germany saying, down with Hitler? It wouldn't have helped the cause at all. Hitler would still be in power and they'd be whacked anyway. You see what I'm saying? It's just, it's just nonsense. So we have to sometimes take two steps back before we can take a step forward. Intelligent thinking, emotional content. I really like that because it's so true. Your emotional contact and everyone, especially Christians, should be based on Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and then we use common sense. What's the situation? What does it demand? What's the best way out or to solve it? Now, I know when we get heated up, it's a quick response, and that's exactly the problem. That's why the Bible says, be angry, but don't sin. Keep your anger. Think it through. Kick it around. And then deal with it. And again, I'm standing up here not like I got it figured out. Well, I do have it figured out, but I don't have it conquered. See, I know the know, I know the information, I know the knowledge, but I don't have it conquered. It's a completely different uh, ballgame, isn't it? Yeah. To know something and to do something are not the same thing. However, you can't do unless you know first. <laughs> Humanity has, for the most part, bought into the lie of quantity being preferred over quality, the complex over the simple. And one reason is... Uh, when the simple is presented, the student can go his way after having comprehended it. He doesn't need to be, nor can he be controlled. That's why you teach a man how to fish. So you don't have to continue to show him how to do it. But then I can't control him. Let me go back to the martial arts. You know why you have all this oriental stuff and all these forms and all this stuff? Because it keeps people in the class. Now, if you really like it, it's like any, any other uh, skill or profession, to be a plumber, you know. You can be shown how to do something, but then you have to work it a lifetime or however long to, to just really do it and get it and know it. But if I have a place and I get paid every month and the simplicity is, you know, maybe six months, and you, you should know everything, maybe even, not even that long with some people. But I need you to come back for years. <laughs> so I come up with drills, and I come up with this and that and the other that kind of really don't even make sense. But you're going to come back to it because you think that's part of getting there. You want to get there. And then the concept of, well, you'll never reach perfection. You can only better your best. That's true, too. But I'm going to teach you to be perfect. Just eat of that fruit. You'll be perfect. You'll be like God. You know what he knows. You don't need him anymore. That's what all this is. We also have a saying, it's just as simple as that. Or don't complicate things. See, those are all basic truths that we know. And yet we let that go. Our emotional content becomes crazy, absolutely crazy. <coughs> Complicating is what Satan must do or he'll be found out. Are you hearing me? Yes. I'm almost not done. If Satan doesn't complicate it, he'll be found out. No rituals need to be done to confront the devil and win, by the way. That's right. Only obedience to the word of God is necessary and the devil will flee. James 4, 7. He has no other choice. Submit to God and the devil will flee. Resist him. And you resist him by submitting to God. Again, we don't resist or we don't submit to God and then have to turn around and do some sort of resisting. Submitting to God is resisting. <laughs> Ow! That's good stuff. No wonder he flees. He has no choice. What's he going to do? Jesus already got all authority back. All we got to do is keep it simple. Get involved with as little of the latest technologies as possible. 
because all is designed to ensnare us to the fullest so that we can be controlled to the max. It's about that. I hear these people and everybody on the internet, oh, you know, do this for freedom. We haven't been free ever since the garden. Yeah. Freedom is a joke. Democracy is a joke. They want to get back to it. There's nothing to get back to. There's only to get saved from death, hell, and the grave. So much of their control is already in place and it's freely given by us to the devil for faster access to the world wide web. We talked about this too. Listen up. Why are these guys billionaires that start these companies as young people? Of course, they don't do this on their own like they led us to believe. They have all kinds of people funding them, doing everything else, pushing them, inviting them, doing this, doing that. They're billionaires because the government and big corporations pay them money. It's free to you and I, supposedly, when we get on Facebook. Well, it's free. There's nothing free. Never has been. Are you kidding? Every time you do that, they got a part of you. They know something about you, about your family, about the little pictures and the birthday party and what you like to eat and where you went on vacation. Da, 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 da. That's what it's all about. It's about ownership of your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. And as a last resort, Satan will actually have his mark of ownership on individuals' right hand, right side, or their foreheads. That'll be the last. And if you and I won't own anything, whose will everything be? Somebody has to be the owner. Ownership is biblical. In fact, the, the commandment that says, thou shalt not steal, is a commandment against not having ownership. You got ownership. You can't steal if somebody doesn't own nothing. See, legally, the government, when they have everything, whatever else they take, no, I own you. I didn't steal anything. So in their mind, they're not thieves. You understand? This is how this goes. It's total demonic. God says, no, that belongs to them. These borders belongs to these people. That gold is his or hers. That field belongs to them. You can't steal it. If you do, you're sinning against me. And that's what the world, of course, is doing. True believers are owned by the Lord who created us anyway. Woo! Yeah. The thing is, he wants us willingly to give him ownership by and through Jesus who paid the price. Paul says, we were bought with the precious blood of Jesus. The cross was the legal and official payment for all who cared to be owned by God. Everybody else is owned by the devil, their father. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. No one sits on a fence. So the simple way to resolve this is to simply choose Jesus and his good news of salvation. Everybody out there that might be watching this, if you haven't chosen Jesus, you need to get on it. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for having paid the price. Father gave life to you and gave you power over your own life. You said, I lay it down. No man takes it from me. And I have power to take it back up. The Father raised you back up. The Holy Spirit raised you back up. And you raised you back up. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Forgive us our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.